Good morning, friends. It's Petra here at Fruition Seeds, and welcome to live Q&A. And heavens, where am I? I'm here in our high tunnel, accompanied by the finest of flowers. And I wish you could smell them. They smell like honeyed vanilla hay, and they are just luscious. They're almost as tall as me, and these are turnips. These are white salad turnips. Super sweet. They're those lovely Tokyo market style, which I love hakurai, hakuri, however you say it, tomato, tomato. But these are not hybrids, uh, patented by multinational corporations. <laughs> these are open pollinated, beautiful heirlooms, adaptable and adapting as we speak. And I'm so delighted to be with you and them this morning. Take a look at these pods. Yes, these long, narrow, lovely pods. The flowers flowered and each of these long, narrow pods will contain a few dozen beautiful seeds that I can't wait to share with you. And in the meantime, here we are and let's share some live Q&A. Jump right in. Don't be shy. I look forward to reading all of your questions, friends. And I love to begin our live Q&As with a story, song, poem, with something to begin our time together. And this morning, some words from Audrey Lord. The master's tools will not dismantle the master's house. Yes, let's talk. The master's tools will not dismantle the master's house. And I would love to know what Audrey Lord would have to say about this precise moment. And I'd be curious what she would say about Facebook because certainly Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> this is the master's house and the master's tools. <laughs> and I would love to think nonetheless that we can use this space to cultivate actual curiosity and actual connection and actual culture. So please don't hesitate to reach out and to be in relationship with us. It is not a community that we are building here with Fruition Seeds on Facebook, on Instagram, on YouTube. Let's make this a living, embodied, resilient relationship that we are all accountable in love to each other for. So don't be shy. And I'm so grateful in the meantime that we have these crazy media to connect us. And so let's do that work as well. So yes, it's live Q&A and jump right in. Don't be shy and good morning, Stu. Stu has any possibility you will have plants at the Ithaca plant sale this year. Oh my gosh. What a wonderful question. I don't think so. We aren't planning on it, but now that you've planted that seed, not so metaphorically. I'll take a look at the dates and if it's on a weekend, we definitely won't, but maybe if there's a Friday, maybe we might make that happen. And certainly it would be so worth it just to come and get to see you and other friends too. So thanks for planting that seed, Stu. And so many people are curious. Oh my gosh, are we sharing tomatoes? And oh my gosh, yes, we have thousands of gorgeous tomato transplants and we're, we share them, yes. And we're in fact sharing them now. You can get them now. In fact, we're open now. <laughs> we're open this weekend and all weekends through May between 10 and two. And it's true, our tomatoes, peppers, eggplants, they are all small yet because they're going to be the perfect size to plant out on Memorial Day. So we are sharing them because people so desperately just want them and I don't recommend getting them from us unless right now you have a gorgeous grow light and are planning on loving them up because we'll have them for weeks yet and they'll be growing in that beautiful 45 degree growth curve with us. We'll taking, be taking immaculate care of them. But if you want, if you know you can take great care of them, you can totally get them from us now. And we of course have lots of broccoli and Brussels sprouts that you can plant out right now as well. And Elizabeth says, we are thinking about doing mostly container gardening this year. Any special advice? Oh my gosh. Well, here is an exciting opportunity to connect. Actually, this next Tuesday night, 
you can hop on our website, fruitionseeds.com, and you'll see under Learn, we have lots of events that you can join that are totally free. And on Tuesday night, we have a whole hour-long webinar, totally free, um, hosted by the Buffalo Public Libraries. That is 10 tips for container gardening and <laughs> raised beds as well. So you can go ahead and register for that in, um, in our, on our website, fruitionseeds.com. And here's a couple keys to keep in mind. So bigger is better is a phrase I never use <laughs> except for container gardening because even if you have a huge 15 gallon container, that is a thimble of soil compared to the glory and full access to full, all kinds of nutrients that plants would have in, a, in your garden. So not constrained by a container. So just make sure that you're going big, getting tons and tons and tons of the biggest container you can and that you're not skimping on fertility. Whether it's adding tons of compost, we have glorious organic fertilizer that's granular slow release. So yes, you want to be not skimping in the fertility department. And those are a few keys, but there's so much more to share. We actually have a free container course as well, an online course, it's a mini course, eight tips of container gardening. So go ahead and jump into that too. But I can't recommend highly enough. Join us on Tuesday for our 10 tips of container gardening um, and raised, get, raised beds. And that will be so much live Q&A as well. So that'll be wonderful. Um, oh, and in that same vein, there's a few other awesome opportunities to connect in the next few days. So actually on Monday, I'm sharing a free hour-long webinar as well with the Rochester Public Libraries are hosting that one. That is the 10 Easy Seeds to Sow, Direct Sow in May. So that also, basically that is a monthly, a monthly awesome just Q&A that we share with the Rochester Public Libraries, but everyone all over the world has access. You'll find the free registration in our web, on our website under Learn. And yeah, so we just have a quick like 15, 20 minutes of here's the deep dive, here's the laundry list with a few tips, and then the rest of that time is just delicious Q&A and community time together. It's super fun. And Kristen says, almost all my large bag of ginger I purchased from you are sprouting. Trying to figure out how many containers I will need to transplant. Any suggestions? So in containers, we plant a little closer when they're in the ground, but in containers we give them a little more space so that they can have a little more access to nutrients. So like eight inches, 10 inches away from each other, and you don't wanna have them any closer than six inches away from the edges of your containers. So do some math and even lift up some rhizomes and see what that's going to look like. So depending how large your containers are and those configurations will make all the difference. Um, but just make sure that you are not skimping in the compost department. We have our humate filled soil building as well as just slow release organic fertilizer. And you can actually pair that with our ginger fertilizer on our website that is specifically there to be awesome for ginger and honestly anything else in the root vegetable department. Um, so whether it's carrots, parsnips, potatoes, ginger, um, that ginger fertilizer is fabulous for it and I'm so excited for you. So feel free to, yeah, it all, it, each of those pieces of ginger, you just want to have them eight inches away from each other and no closer than six inches away from the edges of your container. Awesome question and have so much fun. Ginger is such a beautiful plant and feel, definitely rub its leaves and just smell it all the time. They're, those ginger volatile oils are in every molecule of that plant from root to leaf. And Elizabeth says, is it okay to use floating row cover throughout the summer? I'm in Ithaca, sending love to Ithaca, growing in raised beds, or will it get too hot for the plants? I need some kind of cover to keep the squirrels out. Their digging activities end up killing my seedlings. Yeah, you will be, you're good to go with row cover all summer. Just make sure that it's the insect weight, that lighter weight that we share, rather than the heavier um, season extension weight, because here's the thing that lighter weight 
it's just lighter and more light is going to be passing through. It hardly takes out any of those photosynthesizing wavelengths where the season extension totally does. Not sig super significantly, but you might as well not use it because also it's just gonna make them way too hot potentially too. So definitely get the hoops. We love our spring steel hoops that we share on our website. You can also come pick them up. We have them um, all here at the farm as well um, with both weights of the floating row cover. And here's the thing, you just wanna make sure that anything that's flowering and needs to be pollinated to fruit like a cucumber, like a zucchini, you can have them covered initially, but as soon as they're flowering, they need insects to pollinate them to actually fruit. So as soon as they start to flower, that's when we take the floating row cover off them. And also something like peppers that's self-pollinated, you can have them under peanuts, you can have them under that floating row cover the entirety of the summer and that increased warmth as well as humidity is going to increase the happiness of your resident aphids. And so that's just the key to keep in mind. So just you want to be sure that you're watching closely everything under them and keeping those aphid populations under control. I just love you. <laughs> Best of luck and I'm so excited. Great question, Elizabeth. And Randy says, the master's tools, I've read the essay, but not totally sure I agree. So let's take into, I'm going to send you to our website and take a look. We have new community conversations guidelines and there's just some awesome tools and sentiments for you to lear, learn more, for you to hear more and for us to be in conversation together in a really healthy, constructive way. So it's totally awesome that we are in this conversation and let's continue it check out our community conversations first and foremost and oh my gosh Stu says I use fruition steel hoops covered by shade cloth in summer for protection yes totally shade cloth is so real especially if you're trying to grow you know lettuce or even radishes in the summer that's a wonderful way. I love to shade those things with <laughs> sunflowers too, but shade cloth over steel hoops is an awesome way as well. And Sarah says, good morning, beautiful friend. Good morning, Sarah. Oh my gosh, what's blossoming in your life right now? I can't wait to see. <laughs> and certainly what's delicious. These turnip blossoms are totally delicious. <laughs> I wish I could eat them all, but instead I'm letting them pollinate and make these beautiful seed pods. That's one of the hardest things about being a seed farmer. <laughs> um, and Randy says, if we can transpose the idea to plant our world, wild tending perennials and planted annuals outside the system and inside working together to create a whole system, yes, let's, that's not using the master's tools. <laughs> master's tools are domination tools. <laughs> I love it, I love it. And Steph says, what do you use to control aphid populations, Petra? Thanks for your video. First and foremost, my fingers. Squish them. There's nothing more organic than squishing them. You can spray neem oil, you can spray other things, especially when you have a larger population and there's just, it's out of control. But I highly recommend just when you see them, squish them and look on the undersides of leaves is where they will predominantly live. Also, at the tops of them, that new growth that's most sweet and succulent, that is where they love to eat most. So yes, early and often scout for them. We have a pretty lovely um, blog post about them as well, which I look so forward um, to sharing. <laughs> and Michelle says, are kohlrabi blossoms edible? Yes, absolutely. Delectable, in fact. My fall kohlrabi plants have all gone to seed and I will have an overabundance of blossoms and seeds soon. Amazing. Yes, you can totally eat them. And the blossoms are delicious. Wait, the stems, not as they're not as they're blossoming but if you can catch them even before they blossom think broccoli rob i mean let think broccoli the broccoli is just a florette a flower right before it even opens and so your kohlrabi i actually have some flowering turnips on a friend's farm where they just planted 
turnips, <laughs> big purple top turnips for their deer <laughs> last fall. And we were eating them all winter long, frozen turnips in the soil. And then they're, the ones that survived are blossoming, are sending up these tender shoots they're freaking delicious. It's like the sweetest broccoli asparagus rapini. I'm a little obsessed with it. Um, so, so glad you asked and enjoy every moment and so glad you're going to be saving some of those seeds and sharing them as well. And Courtney says, thank you for your recent video about flea beetles. Very timely for me. Yes, for us all. <laughs> flea beetles knowing that biology makes all the difference and a little bit of prevention is worth a pound of cure and a floating row cover is our friend <laughs> let me count the ways and it's time for a couple more questions friends Teresa says what dates will you have transplants ready again tomatoes tomatillos etc so here's a couple things we have that all on our website but I'll just tell you, everything is available now except for a few peppers and our ground cherries and to tomatillos. Our tomatoes, most of our peppers, eggplants, they're ready now. Um, but you can find those exact, some of our eggplants, they're still a little small. Um, but honestly, the vast majority of everything we have available now. That being said, they're small because we're, we time everything to go out here in zone five Memorial Day or later. So they're small and <laughs> but they're beautiful. And so we have them now. If you have a great grow light, you can bring them home now and be really confident that you didn't miss the boat. We didn't sell out of them. But honestly, next week, the week after that, even the week after that, we have thousands of transplants to share. So don't be shy and come on by. But yeah, you'll find under our website, fruitionseeds.com, under connect, you'll see our garden store. And so excited for you to stop on by. It will be so good to welcome you. And our final question of the day, Petra, can you give us some advice on beets? Should it be down just one, to one plant, one stem per plant? Yes. So fun facts on beets, they are multi-germs. Most seed, like these turnips, one single seed will grow one single turnip, but Swiss chard and <laughs> also beets. Fun fact, they share the same common ancestor. They're both beta vulgaris. And so they're multi-germs. They have multiple seed apical points within growth points within this, that one seed. And that's really fun. It's like all the seeds are flowers are blossoming and then aggregating as those seeds are um, growing together. We have some beets behind me going to seed actually. I can't wait for that. Can't wait. They're mind-blowingly awesome and utterly unrecognizable in their second year beets going to seed as opposed to the first year just growing their beet root. So yes, you want to make sure that you are totally just thinning down to that one stem and then one plant for every couple inches and more than that if you want them to get larger. And so thinning makes all the difference and thinning early and often makes all the difference. So thinning when they're honestly this tall, if they're just burgeoning that first true leaf, that is an ideal time to be, trans to be thinning them. Later than that, they get stressed and are going to struggle to form a nice, big, fat, juicy, sweet, beetroot. So if you want to learn more about beets, I want to tell you more about beets and check it out. This last Wednesday, actually, our free sewing and growing webinar that is going on every week. Last week was actually beets. So you can go on our website, fruitionseeds.com and under learn, under webinar library, you'll see our beet webinar. And if you'd like to join us for the upcoming ones, this next Wednesday, we're just dialing in potting up and hardening off and all the tips for transplanting terrifically. Pardon my love of alliter alliteration. <laughs> so next Wednesday, super fun. You can go ahead and register on our website as well. Totally free and there's a bunch of other webinars coming up throughout May, dialing in lots of different plants and planting strategies. So 
just a few things to accompany you on this beautiful Sunday. And if you are relatively local, come on by. We're open today between 10 and 2. We're open every weekend. Now through the end of May between 10 and 2. There is so much to do in Naples. Bring your hiking shoes. Come hungry. There are so many amazing artists. There are so many incredible things to experience in this valley. And I'm so honored to share it all with you friends. So come on by. We've got seeds, fish emulsion, gorgeous organic transplants, and of course, you know, there are bluebirds nesting in the willow over the pond. And there's a huge pond of compost as well. We have um, compost that is, you know, $7 for a fill your own five gallon bucket, as much as you wanna bring home. We'd love to share it with you. So, so many reasons to stop by and not be shy. And so thus ends another live q and A. I I can't wait for next weekend. I can't wait for next time. Don't be shy. And in the meantime, let's end with the words we began with. Audrey Lord, the master's tools will not dismantle the master's house. One more time. The master's tools will not dismantle the master's house. And friends, we live in an epic time where domination culture, whether it's white supremacy, whether it's patriarchal supremacy, where these things are incredibly convincing us of all kinds of things. The most brilliant trick of the devil is to convince you he doesn't exist. I think that was Voltaire. I'm not exactly sure but someone brilliant said that. And they will do, these systems will do everything they can to convince you that they don't exist and that you don't get to dismantle them by any other means than read their own tools so they can just recreate themselves. So let's sow seeds knowing that these, this is one of the most radical acts of love for our ancestors, both plant and human, who for 10,000 plus years have been feeding, have been nourishing us with these seeds and songs and stories that we might survive unfathomable challenges. And love also for every generation of every species yet to come, that we might sow seeds, that we all might sow more seeds for us all. Let us not just grow our own gardens, but our own gardens. Like, not just our gardens, but our collective abundance and well-being grown as this abundance is shared. So yes, thank you for sowing our seeds and knowing that seeds and you are not as small as you seem. Sending so much love until next time. Stop and smell the turnips. <laughs>